Here's a blast from the past, literally. Back in 1977, as a younger reporter, I was sent to Cape Canaveral in Florida to watch the launch of the two Voyager space probes. Voyager was originally a mission to explore Jupiter and Saturn, and it was supposed to last just for five years. But 36 years later, the two spacecraft just keep on going and keep on sending data back to their NASA masters. In fact, some scientists believe that Voyager 1 has now reached the edge of our solar system. At 18 billion kilometres away, it's by far the furthest that a man-made object has ever travelled. Three, two, one. We have ignition and we have liftoff. It's like an earthquake as the massive Titan Centaur rocket lifts off. Carrying the Voyager spacecraft to extend man's senses farther into the solar system than ever before. And Voyager 1 begins its grand space adventure. So his engine's burning very, very steadily. It's 1977 and the start of what's supposed to be a five-year mission to explore Jupiter and Saturn. But amazingly, 36 years on, this little spacecraft is still travelling, further than scientists could ever have dared to dream. 18 billion kilometres from Earth. 18 billion kilometres. And how fast is she going through space? Um, she goes approximately 35,000 miles per hour. And in now that's about 60,000 kilometres an hour. It's very robust. Yeah. Another out-of-this-world statistic, which Voyager boss Susan Dodd drops to impress. And I'm impressed. Are you still driving it? Yeah, we still drive it. We actually uh, command the spacecraft or talk to the spacecraft every day. If you send a signal to Voyager, how long does that take? Well, from the Earth to Voyager, that signal will travel for slightly over 17 hours. 17 hours? 17 hours. Okay. It's travelling the speed of light, that signal. Yes. I can come in in the morning and say good morning to, to Voyager 1 and uh, come in the next day in the afternoon and Voyager 1 will say good morning back to me. At the headquarters for America's space program in Pasadena, California, the Deep Space Tracking Network is NASA's spectacular showpiece. Touchdown confirmed. We're safe on Mars. This is where the scientists get excited about their space triumphs. But the actual mission control for Voyager is a much more humble affair. A lone engineer watching four old computer monitors commands the spacecraft. And he receives data from the furthest reaches of our solar system, often via the dish at Tidbinbilla near Canberra. And this is where they really write one of the sweetest stories about space. It never gets boring here. Has she rewritten the textbooks? She has rewritten the textbooks, and she continues to rewrite the textbooks. Um, everything we we know about Jupiter and Saturn um, was first discovered by Voyager. After visiting Jupiter and Saturn, it was off to Uranus and Neptune. And more remarkable, never before seen pictures. With that success, NASA extended the journey. And with a command from Mission Control, the Voyagers used the planets to slingshot themselves further into the unknown. This whole journey is extraordinary. When you think it's, it's the spacecraft were launched over 35 years ago, and at, the, at that time, the space age itself was only 20 years old. Dr. Ed Stone is a Voyager veteran. He started on the mission in 1972, five years before it was even launched. And he can't wait for its next milestone. Because any day now, Voyager 1 will become the first man-made object to leave our solar system to leave the effects of our sun's magnetic field and enter what's called interstellar space. The sun creates a giant bubble around itself. All the planets are inside this bubble. It's called the heliosphere. 
And outside is interstellar space. Voyager 1 is now right at the very edge of this bubble about to enter interstellar space for the first time. So that's so, a eureka moment. You actually see this and say, wow? Yes. We see it and we Even say, wow. If you had pictures, what would you say? Nothing. Nothing. You see complete black darkness. There's not enough light out there. From where Voyagers are now, uh, our sun looks just like a bright star. In going to the edge of our solar system, Voyagers 1 and 2 have also gone beyond our expectations. But even though they've already travelled billions of kilometres, this is just the beginning. In about 40,000 years, Voyager will actually have its closest approach to another star, but close really means uh, one and a half light years close, so not, not very close at all. And it will continue its journey uh, around the center of our galaxy. Every few hundred million years, it will make another orbit around the Milky Way. She will travel forever. We will not talk to her forever. When are you going to stop talking to her? We will run out of power to in operate the instruments uh, in 2025. But you're quite a moment, won't it? She'll be a silent voyager, continuing on on her trajectory and her, her trip. Will you cry? Um, I think so. I think so. I won't be alone, though. <laughs> Lots of people will be crying. Hello, I'm Liam Bartlett. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.